I don't want to waste your time with a long intro, so I'm just going to go right into showing you how I built this fully DIY Fivarium. I decided to build my own custom glass enclosure rather than use a pre-built one for this project. I followed the tutorials on Troy Goldberg's YouTube channel for how he makes his Euro style vivariums, so if you want to learn more, definitely go check those out after this video. The total dimensions for this vivarium are 30 inches tall, 23 inches across the front, and 21 inches deep. The background of this build is going to be made using these compressed cork insulation panels. I started by taking measurements of the inside of the tank and cutting out pieces of the cork panel accordingly. It can be helpful to make your pieces slightly larger than you need to account for any mistakes. Cutting the panels is super messy, so either do it outside or have a vacuum nearby. It's not very hard to cut, so any blade you have with serrated edges should do the trick. Don't worry about the rough edges or not perfectly straight lines, it shouldn't affect the end result. To attach the panels to the glass, I used silicone. You probably don't have to use as much as I did, but I prefer to be safe rather than sorry. Also, make sure you're doing this outdoors or somewhere with good ventilation because the fumes from the silicone are terrible. I placed a few books onto the panel to apply even pressure while the silicone cured. This makes sure it has a really strong bond between the glass and the silicone. After leaving this to cure for at least 24 hours and repeating this process for the other sides, it was time to move on to the most fun part of any build, the scaping. This part of the process is something that I believe you really shouldn't rush. Spend time really thinking of what you want the final product to look like once the build is complete. I ordered these cork benches online and decided on this dead tree style layout. I temporarily held all of the pieces in place using deli cups and barbecue skewers. To lock everything into place, I used this expanding foam. I definitely recommend wearing gloves for this step, as this stuff is terrible if it gets on your hands. After spraying the foam, I waited 24 hours and it was fully cured. When it's shiny and smooth like this, the silicone won't bond to it very well, so I carved it down until it had a rough spongy texture. Doing this with something like a Dremel saves a lot of time, but makes a huge mess. Now that the foam is all carved and looks like you put Spongebob in a blender, it's time to cover it up. I did this using silicone and shavings from the cork panels. Also, make sure all of the silicone that you use is animal safe. I personally use GE Silicone 1, but if you want to be extra safe, you can use aquarium specific silicone. I put down an extremely generous amount of silicone onto the foam and then pressed in a handful of the cork shavings. When doing this, it's best to work in small sections so that the silicone doesn't start curing too quickly. Also, just like before with the silicone, do this somewhere with very good ventilation or outside. Trust me. After letting everything cure for a few days, I cleaned off the excess cork shavings with a vacuum. Now for the final step to complete the background, I added some additional details to the cork panels. First, I broke off chunks of excess panels and siliconed them onto the background in random areas. Then I carved in details similarly to how I carved the foam. I found the best way to do this was by using a mix of the Dremel and scraping it with a screwdriver. For the substrate of this vivarium, I decided to use sponge filter mats. This eliminates the need for a drainage layer and also won't break down over time like other substrates do. I carved it to form something that resembled a dried up stream bed and filled that in with gravel and river rocks. Now that the substrate was complete, here's how the whole vivarium was looking so far. I won't bore you with all the names of the plants I use for this build, so instead I'll leave a detailed list in the description. The basic planting process pretty much went like this. Cut a hole in the foam, place the plant inside the hole, and cover the roots with sphagnum moss. 
For some of the other plants, I attach them to the background using barbecue skewers. To really give it a natural look, I added leaf litter and seed pods around the bottom of the vivarium. I installed the Miss King misting system that goes off a few times every day to keep up the humidity levels. For lighting, I'm using two 6500 Kelvin LED shop lights. Each one is connected to a separate timing system so that they can turn off and on separately, sort of like simulating a sunrise and sunset. Now that all that's done, here's how it looked a few weeks after I finished setting everything up.